Good morning. It is <clears throat> it is Monday morning. I know I'm running just oh just a minute late. Everybody will forgive me for a minute, especially if you had any idea what my morning has been like this morning. I hope yours has been good. I hope you've um, we've woken up this morning to um, uh, rain and it's kind of cold and you know there's a, a funeral here at the church today and. Uh, I'm getting a new Bible for Christmas because my sisters and I, Sally, was actually Sherry found, she found this awesome Bible and um, uh, it's it's huge, big, pink Bible. It's NIV, which is mine and Sherry's favorite, but I don't know if it's Sally's favorite. I'm still looking for Psalm 91. In a minute, I'm just going to look here at my phone, but... Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I know how to count, but my Bible fell apart this morning on the way in, so I just scooped it all up and I put it down in this bag that I have. Oh, there's all my 89. <laughs> what kind of Bible teacher? And I'm sitting in a church, so there are literally hundreds of Bibles all around me. All right, I'm just gonna look at my phone. All right, so Psalm 91. So <clears throat> this morning is the uh, funeral service for a precious man of God. Um, Brother Sam Jones this morning is his funeral. Uh, for those of you who don't know Sam, maybe you know Annie, his wife. And Sam has been an elder here at National. They've been attending here forever. And <clears throat> he passed last week. So that funeral is today, and the viewing has just started. The family just got here. Uh, where is Psalm 91? All right, forget it. I've got my phone right here. So today we're going to go back into Psalm 91, but I'm here at the church. Uh, I had hoped, or I had announced, that I would just do it early um, because... Um, then I could, we could be here on time, but <clears throat> we've got a couple of people who normally are here to help with funeral. Normally they're here to help with funerals here at the church, but um, none of them are available right now. And so actually Steve is gonna be over there taking that job and which he is of course very well qualified to do. Psalm 91, here we go, Psalm 91. I hope you're having a good day. I really am having a good day. It's just, I mean, obviously I'm at a funeral, so that's not good, but it's a man of God, a precious man of God. And his family knows. And isn't that reassuring when a family knows that they know that they know what has happened and where their loved one is? So this precious man of God has gone on to be with the Lord. And we're here today to honor and to celebrate his life and for all the things that he has done. And just now he's rejoicing in heaven. It is a terrible, dreary, rainy day outside, as you can see. Um, we don't have any snow, but I think maybe later in the week we'll have some snow. So let's look at Psalm 91. Father, we thank you for the life of Sam Jones, for the legacy that he has left, not just to his family, but to everyone who knew him, because he truly was a man of God. I pray today that you would comfort his family, that you would touch Sister Annie today. And Lord, that this funeral, this homegoing service, this celebration would be worthy of that good man's life. 
Now this morning, I pray that you would touch our minds and touch our spirits as we open your word. In Christ's name, amen, amen, amen. All right, Psalm 91, and uh, we've been, we're slowly going through it, which is fine, 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 uh, because I want us to just get every good part. You know, I've, I've read several theologians and what they had to say about, um, uh, you know, Psalm 91, and um, I did not realize, but there is quite the maybe this maybe that about who wrote psalm 91 because we don't know for sure but according to psalm 90 in some of the words and and how it's phrased uh, some people believe it was moses we know moses wrote psalm 90 and so some people believe he wrote 91 but then others look to other psalms like 94 and maybe 97 and they're saying no this is da this is definitely david well, whoever pinned it, whoever pinned it, they were either one, or maybe it's completely somebody different. Whoever wrote this psalm, truly it is an inspiration, the Word of God. And that's how we're going to treat it. That's how we're going to look at it. There is, I think her name is Sarah Young. She's written some books, Jesus calling and um those are so powerful they're so wonderful but this is oh i just got a an alert on my phone so let me turn that off blood warning so uh but you know we're here we're on high ground jesus is my rock my salvation uh this <clears throat> this psalm so many people have found so much comfort so much uh assurance Assurance. I'm, I'm just going to say assurance. Blessed assurance. Because God's word is, is true. It was true whenever it was penned, by whomever it was penned, by whatever circumstances they were under when they penned it. But it is absolutely true for us right now. Uh, I think I've mentioned that several years ago when uh, John was just a baby, God really gave me this word and it has continued to bless me. I know the same word was also given to my cousin, Karen, uh, Karen Ann. And uh, I know many, many, many of you, many of us have studied God's word, but I don't know this is my go-to. I, I don't know that I have a life verse, but if I had a life verse, maybe it would be Psalm 91 because it just repeats his assurance over us. It starts out by telling us how we dwell in him and, and those of us who dwell in him, that he is our shelter. Then it goes through the whole, um, if he will save you from the fowler's snare. And I read something interesting, uh, I think yesterday, about the fowler's snare. And that is the fowler's snare it changes. It's not always the same trap. Now, I never thought about that before, but it's it's not always the same trap. And, and, and what the fowler uses to entice what he is capturing, it changes. What the fowler uses to entice what he is trying to capture. Now, that makes a lot of sense, right? That makes a ton of sense. Because if Satan uses a trap and we fall into it because we're enticed by something, then, you know, he's going to be like, oh, I'm going to try that again. But maybe the next time we're saying, no, 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 I fell for that uh, the first time, but I'm not falling for that again. So then maybe Satan says, well, you know what? I've got lots and lots of ways to entice. I've got lots of ways to trap you. But this is saying... God is saying to us, he will save us from that, whether by releasing us from it or by protecting us from ever going into that snare. And God protects us. Sometimes we fall into this same pit over and over and over, and God rescues us. But sometimes he rescues us by saying, wait a minute, 
you fell into that pit the last time. You know, the last. Or you went right into that place where you had no business. Or you walked right back into that home where you have no business. That's how Satan is trying to snare us. That's how he's trying to trap us. But Psalm 91 is telling us, I'm going to rescue from you from that. I'm going to protect you from that. I'm going to make sure that you're under my feathers. You're under my protection. You're under my wing. It says, Oh, number seven, Psalm 91, number seven, Psalm 91, number seven, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. So there could be destruction all around us, all around us, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment the wicked this is saying there's there's going to be times in our lives when we see others falling there's going to be times and and let me just be very 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 clear about something whenever this this is well it will not come near you that's because he is putting up that shield of protection but let me tell you something else we live on earth we live on earth. And let's just take, for example, this pandemic. If we were to say, well, I, I, I cannot be touched by the pandemic because I'm a child of God. Well, let me tell you what happens. Then when somebody that you know is a child of God, when they have this virus, then, then are you thinking it's because they've fallen? Because if you are, you are falling into one of Satan's traps. You are. God says he will not let evil befall us. Let me tell you something. When, when the farmer goes out and is cutting down his corn, the corn gets cut down, but the weeds get cut down too. Now, here's the difference. The weeds are destroyed. But the corn is used. So I'm saying to you today that if you get this virus, if I get this virus, and our wicked neighbor gets this virus, the outcome is different because we are different. It will not become an evil falling down for me. I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how to describe that. But I will tell you that the outcome is what makes it different. No evil may befall your dwelling. I'm not gonna let evil in my house. I'm not gonna let these evil things happen because I'm gonna tell you in the end, I'm gonna be praising God. I've had on my mind, I woke up with this song on my mind. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. That was penned by a man whose entire family was lost at sea. A, a famous, precious minister, a precious man of God. His family was going to go overseas ahead of him, and then he was to follow. And he got word that all souls were lost. And then he wrote, it is well with my soul. Now, he could have let that totally destroy him. But instead, he said, it is well with my soul. If things happen in your life, do you still trust God? Or do you turn like the wicked and say, there is no God? Or God allowed that wicked thing to happen in their life? No, I'm, I'm going to continue trusting God. It's not enough to believe in God. You have to believe God. Everybody can say, oh, I believe there's a God. Do you believe in healing? No. 
Do you believe in salvation? No. I believe there's a God. And, and when things are happening all around them, you know, they're the first ones to call us and say, can you pray for me? Because I believe in God. But do you believe God? That's what this verse is telling me. It's not enough to believe in God. I have to believe God. And then I can see with my own eyes how the wicked are falling, how the wicked are going away. Then I can say, the Lord is my refuge. And if I make the most high my dwelling, notice he's talking about that twice. That adds importance to it. If I make the Lord my dwelling place, if I make him my refuge, no harm can overtake me. It might try. It might look like it's happening, but it's not. No harm, no evil can come in my house. It can't. I've dedicated it. I've blessed it. So if evil were to try to come into my house, well, I'm going to call it what it is and put it out. I'm going to call it what it is and put it out. If I stand strong with Jesus Christ, then he is my shield. He is my rampart. He is my buckler. That means I'm going in and I'm armed and ready to go. So if evil tries to come into my house, I have the authority to cast that thing out, to call it what it is and put it right back out. No disaster can come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you. Now, let me tell you something about this verse. He will command his angels concerning you. This is absolute confirmation that we are not supposed to be praying to angels. We only pray to God, to Jesus Christ. We only pray through the Holy Spirit, the three, the three in one. Because listen to what the angels are. They're his angels. They're his angels. And he is sending them because of his authority over your life. Honestly, that's one of those, I could sit there all day and, and just talk about that and think about that. He will concern his he will tell his angels to go out and take care of his child. And it says, for he will, uh, to guard you in all your ways, they will lift up your, uh, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. They will lift you up, but it's because he's told them what to do. They will guard you because he's told them what to do in your life. They will so protect you that you can take up serpents, that you can tread on the lion and the cobra, and it, you can trample the great lion and the serpent, which of course is Satan. I love the thought of that. Just us in our boots, just stomping out Satan. Our grandson Jack was over at the house last night, and Jack is a great lover of his shoes. He's got, I don't know how many pairs of shoes, and he and his dad wear the same size, which is awesome, which means because my son-in-law, Steve, also is a great lover of shoes. And so between the two of them, who knows how many pairs of shoes they had. But when he came over last night, he had on this incredibly muddy, beat up looking pair of kind of a workbook boot kind of shoe. I, I don't, I might be calling it completely the wrong thing. I'm sure I'll hear about this from Jack, but they looked awful. And I have never seen Jack in shoes that look awful. As a matter of fact, if my shoes are dirty, he will, he will stand there and be antsy until he says, oh, would it be all right if we, with you? You know, I've got some stuff. Um, I, can, uh, I can clean your shoes and they'll look so great. 
And, and I love that about Jack. He absolutely got that from T.L. Lowry. I love that about Jack. Uh, <clears throat> but last night he had on this beat up pair of shoes and I said, he said, I wasn't gonna mention it, but he said, Nanny, I've had these shoes for four months and look at them. And I said, those shoes have had a hard life, Jack. What on earth? And he said, well, you know, he wore them to work and he wears them when he's out working on his car. And, and he started telling me all the different things. And I was thinking this morning, that's what our spiritual shoes should look like. They should not be pristine heels. They should look like work boots that have just been stomping and treading and walking because we've got angels who are going to help us through that situation. We've got angels who are lifting us up and helping us over those bad spots. But there are times when God says, you go girl and you get out there and you stop down those, those things that are trying to come against you. You walk right over those obstacles. And are they fierce? Yes. Yes, they're fierce. If they were tiny little things, we wouldn't even call them obstacles. When I'm out walking around in my yard and I'm walking on the grass, that's not an obstacle. If I step on a dandelion, that's not an obstacle. If I'm walking through clover, that's not an obstacle. But the other night we were over at the marina and I was walking around and trying not to get involved in what was going on with taking our boat out of the water. And uh, I was walking around and I even called over to Maya, who was also not helping with the boat, and I said, Maya, look at all this clover. And I wasn't being careful because it was just clover. I was just walking. I was just in tennis shoes walking. But then, as I got over closer to uh, where they have been working on the dock, I had to be very careful because there were some logs there that honestly, I could not even get over. Now, had someone come over and lifted me up and just set me on the other side of that log, success. I think that's what this scripture is talking about. There are things that God says to us, you can walk on that yourself because I've given you authority. I've put you in that armor. I've shod your feet with peace. You can walk on that yourself. But then these big obstacles, I have commanded my angels to take you and help you through that situation. Just getting here today felt like an obstacle, but honestly, it wasn't. However, once I got here and I looked out and I saw this sweet family, that's an obstacle that they need help in. They, they cannot walk through this situation of losing their family member or their husband or one of our church members. We can't go through that without the help of Jesus Christ. We need that help. It says you will trample the great lion and the serpent. It says you will walk on the lion and the cobra, but then it says you will trample down. Trample down. I'm gonna do that one more time. Trample down. Just beat the snot out of them. I love when I am coming in against something that is evil. This summer, my sister and some of our family members, we came against a cobra and a serpent. And we watched as God just beat that thing down. I think I've told you before, but it bears repeating, that years and years ago, we were living in Upper Marlboro. That's uh, a little further out from the church than where we live now. And, and we lived uh, back in some woods and uh, Steve and I were driving home one day and we pulled up into our driveway. It was a, a circular driveway that went up in front of the house. So we're pulling up and there was this terrible, terrible, terrible thing in our driveway, terrible looking. And I said, oh my goodness, Something has died in our driveway. What has happened? What is going on? And about that time, my two daughters, Amy and Stephanie, they were teenagers. So this has been a long time ago. 
they came running out my front door and they're out on the front porch doing this. And I said, what is happening right now? And so uh, I, I pulled, pulled on around the bloody mess in the driveway and I pulled up and I said, what on earth did that used to be and what happened to it? And they said, mom, it was a snake and it was a great big snake and it really was it's not them exaggerating for once it was a great big snake and they said when we saw it we were driving up amy was driving but stephanie was over there in the passenger side and i wish i could have seen this happen with my two children so they saw this big snake and they ran over it and then they backed up and they ran over it. amy back forth back forth back forth. I said, how many times did you run over it? Oh, oh, maybe a hundred, maybe a hundred times, mom. Then they pulled up past it, way safely past it. Of course, by then it was way dead, so dead. So they went up in our barn and they found our machete and they went down and they took that machete to that snake that they had run over a hundred times and they chopped it and chopped it and chopped it and chopped it. You talk about feeling victorious. Those two girls felt like we should go out to eat. Victorious, the hunter, the dead serpent. Let me tell you something. That's what we need to do to the serpent. God has given us a vehicle that we can hit that serpent time and time and time and time and time again. That we can go back and forth and back and forth in that vehicle that he has given us because we have authority. They had the windows rolled up even after they knew it was long dead. They had the windows rolled up just in case. But then once they drove past it and they looked by and they saw that dead serpent, then that's when they got, went up and got the machete out of the barn and continued to chop it. Listen, we, we have the authority to not just run over the serpent, but to run over it time and time again. And then to, he's going to give us that sword. He's going to give us that sword. He's going to now I'm going to tell you something. My sword is well used. He's going to give us that sword that we can just take the head off. We can take the head off. The only thing missing from that story was they did not stand on it and shout and take pictures of each other because they didn't have cell phones in. That's what this is telling me. This is what it's telling me. I... I can not only take care of the lion and the cobra, but I can come against and I can trample down the great lion and the serpent. What authority we have. What an assurance we have. What a power we have in our hands that so many times we're going to say, well, under the circumstances, you know, I'm doing okay. Get on top of the circumstances. Are you know, considering my situation right now, you know what? Let God get in your situation. You might not look, from the outside, you might not look one ounce different. I had knee replacement eight years ago. Eight years ago, I had my knee replaced. And on the outside, it looks bad. I've got a huge scar. And, and no matter what people say, yeah, people see that scar. People ask me all the time, oh, what happened to your leg? I told Justin uh, a couple of years ago, I said, you know what I'm going to say from now on? Anybody who's so, I don't even know what to say, who would say, a stranger who would say to you, because people who know me never say, what happened to your leg? But if I told Justin, the next time some random stranger says, what happened to your leg? I'm just going to say one word. I'm just going to say motorcycle. That's not a lie. I, I, I didn't say I was in a motorcycle wreck or I'm a, I ride motorcycles all the time and, you know, that's just a scar I got. I'm not, that's not a lie. Now, I'm going to tell you, God took care of that for me because ever since I told Justin, next time that happens, I'm just going to say motorcycle. Nobody else has asked me. 
So God just took care of that for me. You know, he's like, Janice, <clears throat> there are things that leave us scarred and on the outside, we, we might look like, wow, what happened? But man, when we have that authority, when we have, when we are under the blood of Jesus Christ, because that, that knee, it works perfect now. I don't have arthritis in it anymore. It's strong. I mean, it, I've got a metal knee in there. Yeah, it sets off security, but who cares? I don't look like on the inside what I've been through. I don't. That's because Jesus has given me so much authority and so much protection. And because he gave me Psalm 91 that I have based my whole life on. The word of God is my machete. And I can trample down the enemy because I have that authority. And if it looks like it's going to be bigger than what I can handle, well, God has given his angels over me to guard me, and his angels are going to be protecting me because they're under his authority, they're under his uh, direction. I love it. This is so encouraging to me. I need my head lifted up, and you need your head lifted up. It's a strange year, but I will not be defeated. I will not. I will not lose my faith in God. I will not lose my authority. And I will remember and I will stand strong because on the solid rock I stand and all other ground is just sinking sand and muck and mire, but I stand on a firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I have no idea where I'll be, but I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. God bless you. Father, Father, we thank you for the authority that you've given us. We thank you for your angels. We thank you, God, that you yourself reach out and grab us up and hold us close to you and pull us under your arms and under your wings of protection. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this machete that you've given us that destroys the enemy, that destroys our fear, that destroys our anger, that destroys our doubt. It destroys these things that are trying to take control of our mind. But God, you've given us the authority to run over those things back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then to destroy them with your word. And I thank you for that. In Christ's name, amen, 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 amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Pray for the Jones family today.